two, two dudes that watched Jesus ascend. All they were doing was looking up. And the angel said, what, what, what are you looking up at? All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to worship on this Thursday evening. I'm Pastor Roger Barron, the pastor here at Bethany Lutheran Church, and welcome to all in here in the, in the sanctuary, which are a very few tonight, but all the, also all of you out there at home. Uh, this is Ascension Day, the Ascension of our Lord, and it is a day, it's a feast day in the church. It is a big celebration. Uh, that exists in our church, and we're going to talk more about that this evening. But now I invite you all to, first of all, there is a bulletin out there. I hope you've all found it on, either on our website um, or through our email. Um, but also, as a reminder, we will be ha serving communion tonight. So if you don't have your elements available, take the time to 
go and get them, but don't miss out on centering your hearts and minds on the, the ascension of our Lord Jesus tonight as Francis opens us up here with her prelude, Alleluia, for, by Mozart. So, um, I invite you to stand as you're able. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. And I want you to think about those words. Let me say them one more time, this resurrection life. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us. And we thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, uh, from tears to joy. And I think I missed a line in there, but you know, you'll forgive me. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Change our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and let us sit back and enjoy as Terry sings for us, O Christ Our Hope, played by Francis. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things, mercifully gave us faith to trust that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us re listen to Lori as she shares with us our first reading from Acts. A reading from Acts chapter 1. Luke writes, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Je Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand now for the gospel acclamation. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And now it says meditation tonight, so that means I'm supposed to have a short message, but... We'll see. I got people clocking me in here. So today, we take some time out of our busy week to observe what many uh, of us refer, refer to as the Forgotten Festival, right? The Forgotten Festival of the Christian calendar. You see, there's actually five main festival days, and that can be argued by some, but five main festival, festival days on the Christian calendar. 
but by festival days, I mean chief holidays on the liturgical calendar with some substitute in and out different days for others, just a little bit. So these are the five, according to me, and according to some other uh, theologians much smarter to me, and while Reformation Day is quite important to us Lutherans, it doesn't make the list. So let me talk to you a little bit about what this is. First, Christmas, right? Pr Christmas is an easy one to determine. The celebration of Jesus' birth, we're pretty good at observing that, I think, and we can all agree. The next one is, what do you think? Epiphany. Epiphany, and we know about Epiphany. This comes right at the heels of Christmas, where the wise men go out and observe Jesus' birth. They celebrate Jesus' birth. And this Epiphany is really kind of what reveals or manifests Jesus' presence to the world. And then, of course, the easy one is Easter. Easter is number three, and we, our most recent celebration of today of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, and, and that's a pretty easy one to understand. But then another one coming up here is Pentecost. And we hear about Jesus proclaiming this time when the great power will come, and this comes 50 days after Easter. And we know about, a lot about Pentecost because a lot of us Lutherans get to dress up again in our Reformation outfits of red that day. So that's number four. So what do you figure the fifth one really is? The often forgotten holiday. Because we don't celebrate it or specifically recognize it on the day of. It's always on a Thursday. And that is Ascension Day. Falls on a Thursday every year because why? It is 40 days after the resurrection. Ascension often gets left out, or we throw it to the next Sunday and make a mention of it um, as our celebration. But it, it, is a, it, it is a greater day than what we often uh, provide in our observation. So what's Ascension Day all about? Two places in Scripture you can go and find what it's all about. We read them both today. Acts chapter 1 and the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24. These two de describe the ascense, ascension of Jesus into heaven. And of course, we know that ascension, of, uh, or ascension comes on the heels of our Easter celebration, and we all know that Jesus rose from the dead on Easter. And he appeared to the disciples numerous times over these past 40 days. We've talked about a lot of that on Sundays showing them his hands, the, the wound in his side, eating and drinking with his disciples. He wanted them to know that it was really him. It was really him. Risen from the dead, he was real and standing before them, breaking bread with them, continuing to teach them. Not as a ghost or a figment of their imagination. He truly defeated death for the world. But then, 40 days later, ascension, he ascended into heaven. 40 days after the resurrection, he took the disciples with him to the Mount of Olives in the vicinity of Bethany. He lifted up his hands, he blessed them, and having done that, he was taken up into heaven. Now, there are some churches that actually have a hole in the ceiling. We don't have one of those. We do have a vaulted ceiling to where they would carry out this act and they would raise this Jesus statue up into the, to the hole in the ceiling. Uh, I think that's weird. I'm sorry. So the book of Acts goes a little further and more in depth 
it says after giving the Great Commission, which is actually not Acts, but it is from Matthew 28. But the Ma Acts version we heard just a little bit ago from Lori. Jesus commands us saying, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I think maybe we're at the ends of the earth. One of my favorite verses in all of Scripture because it challenges us today. It calls us out, makes us think about these words that all of us are working hard or should be working hard to fulfill and to live into. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, we are told. And then he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. In other words, his visible presence was withdrawn from us. Instead of a localized presence, which Jesus would now be everywhere, he was localized in the lands in which he walked. But now he is with God, but in essence he is with us all. Everywhere his word is proclaimed and his sacraments administered, Jesus is present. God is present among us. The Holy Spirit attended these things so that hearts everywhere might believe that Jesus died for them and rose again without the benefit of seeing. You see, this is the bottom line. Ascension is about Jesus, who, who having done all these things, is our salvation, is taken up from the earth, from the top of the Mount of Olives, in front of the astonished yet joy-filled disciples. And at any rate, what is amazing of the, of the ascension uh, what is the meaning of ascension for us Christians, I ask you? I think, first of all, the ascension is God the Father's way of saying, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, son. Mission accomplished, son of God. That's a phrase commonly used, and we're given an assignment to complete it. Jesus' mission is complete. Ours continues through the Great Commission. So, we too one day will hear those words, mission accomplished. But our work here is not yet finished. In Luke's gospel, right before the account of Jesus' ascension, records the following. Jesus opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. When do you think that's going to happen for us? I'm waiting. Some days I scratch my head. What is Paul saying? So today, on this Ascension Day, we celebrate this sign of mission accomplished. For Jesus accomplished all that the Father had set out for him to do in this world. In order that mankind, you and me, are redeemed are redeemed of our earthly failures. And thus, this accomplished mission means that we can all be filled with a great hope and comfort throughout the rest of our lives. Up to this point and into the future. For you may remember a passage that I often use at funerals or celebration of life services from John chapter 14. I love this verse where Jesus said these words, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have not told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. I love it. I love it so. So the ascension is this literal fulfillment of these words, these amazing and comforting words of Jesus. These words fill us with hope in our lives of struggle today 
which sometimes seems meaningless as we drift through our daily chores and activities. All of us who belong to Jesus will go somewhere one day. Our destiny is to be with Him. We have an eternal home prepared for us by the ascended Jesus Christ. What a comfort as we bid farewell to loved ones or contemplate our own eventual demise. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus says. May we, all of us, share this hope for the world, being witnesses for all the world, this hope that no challenge, no trial, no tragedy, no dilemma, not even death itself can take away. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Now please enjoy as Terry and Francis share with us their music gifts and, and provi provide us with Christ is Alive, number 389. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no longer bound. To distant years in Palestine, but saving, healing here and now, and touching every place and time. In every inn's uplift and war, where color scores. still yet loves the more and lives when even hope has died women and men in age and youth can feel the spirit hear the call and find the way the life the truth us read for all. Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age, till earth and sky and ocean ring with joy, with justice, love and praise. Let us pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at his ascension seated him at the right hand power, uh, the right hand of power and glory in the heavens. O oh God, creator of the world, who blesses us in every way and provides for our daily need, have, have mercy, mercy and, and hear us. us. O oh God, redeemer of the world, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead to sit at your right hand in glory so that we might have an advocate in heaven. Have, have mercy, mercy and, and hear us. us. O God, sanctifier of the world, 
who sends the Holy Spirit that we might be made holy in faith and through the remembrance of all that our ascended Lord has taught us. Have, Have mercy, mercy and hear us. Holy Trinity, one God, give ear to, to our, our prayers, prayers and, and supplications. supplications. For your only Son, who lived and died, that we might have eternal life with you. We give, give you, you thanks, thanks, O Lord. For his glorious resurrection and the proclamation of the gospel of his holy name. We give, give you, you thanks, thanks, O Lord. For his ascension into heaven, where you have placed all things in heaven and on earth under his dominion. We give, give you, you thanks, thanks, O Lord. For his promise that he has gone to prepare a place for us. We give you thanks, O Lord. For the promise of the angels that he will return in the same way that we saw him go into heaven. We, we give, give you thanks, thanks, O Lord. Baptized into his name, we are your humble servants, O God. Hearken, Hearken to, to the, the words of our, our petitions. That we who are raised with Christ may set our hearts on things above, not on things below. Conform, Conform us to Christ. To Christ that we might be filled with the promised Holy Spirit and be inspired to proclaim Christ's resurrection and ascension in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Conform Amen. us to Christ. That keeping his commandments, we might abide in him and he in us. Conform, Conform us to Christ. That we might be found faithful and blameless through repentance and the forgiveness of sins when he returns in glory. Conform us to, to Christ. Christ, that at the last we may stand around his heavenly throne and sing his eternal praises with all the angelic hosts. Conform, Conform us to, to Christ. Christ. Let all your angels worship him, O God. Bend every, every knee in heaven, in heaven and on and earth, earth at the, at the sound, sound of his holy name. He is our high priest and intercessor in the heavens. He has, he has opened, opened the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of heaven, heaven to, to all, all believers. believers. Almighty God, all your works are glorious, but none, but none is more glorious than the work of your Son, our ascended Lord, Jesus Christ. As you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in power, so keep us ever close to his resurrection and ascension, that we too might be raised and seated with him in your heavenly kingdom, through the same Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. God's peace. Peace, peace Lori, peace, Francis, peace. James, Judy, Terry, Mike, up there in the, in the cheap seats. Peace be with you all that are out there at home. Peace. Thank you for being with us tonight. And now we enter into this time of our holy meal, a time of communion, a time where we can absorb the resurrected Jesus in our presence, knowing that Jesus exists with, around, and in, and under these elements of bread and wine that we consume. Our service continues with our dialogue. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up our heart, your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death, and in his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth, on earth and on sea, and all of their creations, with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Taking our bread element, raising it, presenting it, in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now taking the cup. Again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And now gathered into one, as our Lord Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and now removing your mask you may take your bread and with these words, the body of Christ given for you. And then taking the cup and hearing those words, the blood of Christ shed for you. Thou hast led captivity captive and received gifts for men, yea, even for thine enemies, yea, even for thine enemies. Thou art gone up on high, 
Thou has led captivity captive. Thou has led captivity captive. And received gifts for men. Yea, even for thy enemies, for thy enemies. That the Lord God might dwell among them, that the Lord God might dwell among them. That the Lord God, that the Lord God might dwell among them, might dwell among them. That the Lord God might dwell among them. I invite you to stand as you're able. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ protect you and keep you in God's graces now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live our lives. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God bless you with the knowledge that his only Son has ascended into heaven to prepare a place for you. Amen. May you be lifted up and guided by Christ's intersection at God's right hand. Amen. At Christ's promised return, may you be found blameless and welcomed into the joys of God's eternal kingdom. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our sending song, Love, or Lord, You Give the Great Commission. But I really want to thank everybody for being here tonight and helping out, from Judy being the contact tracer, James for being here, Mike upstairs running the technology, Lori for reading, Terry for singing, and of course, Francis is always here as my right-hand uh, uh, inspiration playing music. And God be with you all who participated. Let's sit back and enjoy this closing hymn together.
speak and preach the word. Let the church neglect its mission and the gospel go unheard. Help us witness Have a terrific evening, everyone. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bye.